Right now joining us to break it down is Lindy Davis. He's the publisher of LindySports.com, the guy that puts all this together just right here up the road in Birmingham, Alabama, across the country. This publication is there. Lindy, welcome back to T-Town. I hope all is well, sir. I'm doing well, Ryan. Thanks thanks for having me on today. Well, Lindy, it's just a sign that college football is getting a little bit close. I mean, we know when we get almost to that 100-day mark, here comes the Lindy season preseason magazines. No doubt about it. I think everybody gets a little hungry about this time. Uh, And, you know, there'll be two months of reporting. So when you get within a couple months or so, you can get excited. I think the magazines are when we wet, wet the fans' appetites a little bit and Probably why we're still in business. That's 38 years. 100%. 38 years. Uh, Lindy, as you look back at all these preseason publications, we were talking to uh, one of our guests yesterday about the uh, the preseason predictions and the covers. Is there a favorite cover that you just go to and you like, man, I really like that cover? No. I mean, we do so many, Ryan. I mean, in football alone this year, I don't have it in front of me, but we'll do about 70 covers in football alone. We do. 28 for the NFL, and of course for the SEC we do we do 12 for the SEC, one for Alabama, all and one for each state. So, no, we do so many. I don't know that I have a uh, a favorite, but uh, we we try to make sure we don't look stupid. There's a lot of covers to check, a lot of cover lines to check. I can tell you that. So, uh, we're really on the other end of the spectrum, trying to make sure we don't do anything real dumb. All right, Lindy, what do you expect for Alabama in 2019? Well, Ryan, the offense should, should uh, you know, on paper look very much like last year, uh, assuming Tua stays healthy, that is. Uh, you know, their offensive line should be strong again. Uh, they've got all the receivers back. I think they've got him a little more depth at receiver this year. Uh, you know, everything lines up for their offense to be off the charts good as it was last year. Uh, defensively, uh, they did have some guys that came out early. A lot of guys came out early, three or four, that uh, – Two or three maybe should have come back, but I think the secondary is more a lot more experienced, and it should be quite good. Uh, you know, they got some bodies. They've got some new guys on the defensive line. Uh, right one day was coming back, even though he didn't have a, I don't think a real good year. Maybe that's part of the reason he came back. Well, that's uh, certainly a, a plus to have an established guy there. Uh, they've got, the, of course, seven, I think, defensive linemen coming in, a great recruiting class coming in. But so some of those guys are going to play. There's no doubt about it. That, I think, inside linebackers somewhat of a concern. Uh, but overall, you know, the defense was not quite up to Alabama standards last year, what we're used to seeing. Part of that was the offense. The offense scored so much, it put more pressure on the defense, didn't have the ball control you had in the past. But, you know, I look at Alabama, I look at, you know, I think the team looks a lot like last year. You've got, you know, just a, a, a team that's going to score a lot of points. And uh, we'll just have to see how they gel, but they certainly have all the pieces to have a great team they've got some time the front end of the schedule looks you know fairly light so they've got some time to probably develop they do have got to go to a&m uh obviously in, in the first part of the season but uh you know outside of that uh you know things are in place and uh, we'll, we'll see how it, how it evolves but keeping to a healthy is certainly a key we're talking with the publisher the editor uh, the guy that puts a lot of this college football material with the help of his colleagues there at LindySports.com. LindySports.com. We can order the magazine. If you're living out in Texas, listening to us via the internet, if you want to go and you want to order the Alabama cover or the Southeastern cover, you can do that. LindySports.com. LindySports, the publication is out. If there's something that you question about Alabama, what is it? Well, yeah, I think, again, the front the front seven on defense, like I said, I think the inside linebacker, uh, Dylan Moses is back. He's really good. We all know that. But they don't have anybody else that's really proven. And you're going to have just, you know, a lot of new guys on the defensive line. I mean, you don't have the depth. I think lack of depth last year was, was a concern. I think Alabama, you know, in the past they've been playing seven, nine defensive linemen. Last year they were playing four or five, and the guys got tired in the fourth quarter. And uh, that could be an issue. Uh, so they could not get a pass rush on Clemson. And I think part of that was that they didn't have the bodies to rotate in and out to keep the guys fresh. And so do some of those freshmen, I mean, some of those freshmen are going to have to play. There's no question about it. But uh, so I, I think that's really, you know, I think the key is uh, uh, the front seven on defense is developing. And then also, uh, you know, finding a punter, uh, the kicking game, uh, the, the, the freshman is supposed to be a really good kicker, and I think he's going to uh, solve the place kicking problem. But I think they, they don't have a punter yet, from what I'm told. So the punting was abysmal last year. They didn't have to punt a lot, which was a good thing. 
but it was terrible when they did. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's, uh, a good punter is always, always important. So, I mean, the offense is just, you know, stacked, uh, Ryan. I don't think there's really any questions on offensively. Uh, you know, Brian Robinson will play this year. Of course, they got the, the big freshman coming in. So they're going to be Sanders. They're going to be fine. At running. They got the running back, just like they always do. So they got the receivers, you know, Tua. Uh, you know, the two, I guess it's worth mentioning, you know, Tua's reputation was, well, he's going to, uh, he's a, he's a gunslinger. He can, he's very accurate, but he takes too many risks and, you know, he's going to make some turnovers and he didn't have a turnover until LSU. But when they played top teams down the stretch, he did exactly that. Now, in his defense, he was hurt against Georgia, but he threw some very ill time passes against Georgia and Clemson. That was the fact. And so. You know, he can't do that. He's got to protect the football. And, uh, you know, there's a fine line between being a gunslinger and being and taking care of the football, too. And uh, he didn't do a real good job of it against Georgia or Clemson. So that's important. So, uh, But anyway, all the pieces are there. Uh, you know, Ryan, they do need some people to develop on the, on the front side of the defense. But every year that's going to be the case. You never have a, you never have a set team before the season starts. Lindy's, uh, Lindy, Lindy, I, I want to go to something that has been given a lot of attention in the last 24 hours, and it's the anonymous coaches that has <laughs> yeah. spoke to you, okay? And, right. and yeah. I mean, this one is um, – now, we're, we're taking bets down here in Tuscaloosa. We've narrowed it down to two coaches, okay? <laughs> we, 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 we think it's either Kirby Smart or Urban Meyer. <laughs> I, I'm well, just – You know I'm not talking. You know uh, that. <laughs> Uh, what, 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 what if we buy a hundred publications? What will you no, talk? No, no, couldn't yeah. talk then. Okay. We, I'm uh, just teasing with you. I'm just, we, uh, we, uh, yeah, no, it's gotten a lot of play. Fine bomb. They're talking about it on fine bomb today. They were talking about it on, uh, three men front yesterday. So it's getting a lot of play. We've had them for years. I mean, we've done it for years. I don't know. I guess maybe a little more controversial comments this year, but we've always thought that's important. I mean, coaches. They're on the record. They're not going to say what's on their mind. You 100%, know 100%, 100%. 100% so, agree. so that's the only way this works. But we're not trying to create controversy. We're really not. We're just trying to, you know, get a uh, respected coach, you know, that knows the game, what they think. And I think the fans like it. I, I think it adds something to the magazine. So, yeah. It, and we really like it when people are talking about it because <laughs> you like to have people talking about it. Well, so, listen, we, we've talked about it for two days down here in Tuscaloosa. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. uh, what do you what do you think the comment meant? Uh, I think Tua needs to humble himself. Well, you know, I, I actually had a uh, one of my good Alabama fans, a huge Alabama fan. He told me that same thing. He really did. I don't know. I think you know. I saw him. You know, I, I, I think it could probably probably party just. Trying to do too much. Part of it, trying to do too much. I mean, he threw some terrible balls against Georgia. He threw in a triple coverage against Georgia. He threw in a triple coverage against Clemson. So, you know, part of it's just, I think, is you know, talking about his playing. You know, you gotta, you gotta know when to take your chances and and not, and not try to be a hero in every play. I think that's part of it. Uh, he's playing not his personality. He's a great kid. We all know that. But uh, I think just the fact that uh, you know, trying to do too much. And he did try to do too much against Georgia and Clemson on a couple of occasions, and uh, easily could have cost him the Georgia game. And uh, made a was a great contributor in the Clemson game. I, I've told many people this: the game to a play against Clemson, Alabama had no chance to win. They cost him at least two touchdowns. I would argue three. So, uh, you know, anyway, that's my opinion, but I, I will stick with that. And I love to as much as anybody. Well, and, and we'll see if the adjustments. Um... You know, obviously, it could be that he's playing quality defenses. It, obviously, it's better teams. I was talking to Joel Clatt up in Nashville uh, a couple of weeks ago, and and he was because I was we were talking about the 2020 NFL draft and could Tua make that run and you know be that number one guy. And he said, you know, I, I want to see Tua uh, rip the the top teams apart just like he did the yeah. uh, uh, the inferior competition. He said, I want right. to see him on the big stage. Well, he's got to. I mean, you you know, you got to. But you got to know when to hold them and when to fold them. You, you know, you, you can't when you go up against a top defense. You know, there's times you just got to throw the football away. You can't make every play. And uh, so, you know, I'm sure he will. You know, I expect him to have a great year. He's got a lot of weapons around him. You just you just got to throw the ball football away. Uh, uh, against Clemson, we know he had to pick six. He also had interception on first and ten. And Alabama was moving the ball at will. He's still in the triple coverage. Uh, and he also missed the receiver too, uh, with the wrong read. So, you know, just just making the right decisions, and uh, I'm sure he will, and uh, he he should have a fantastic year. 
Let me go back to another comment that's been quoted, and and Nick Saban went fourteen and zero in your magazine, and was miserable because all the staff coaches and nobody knew how to do it the Alabama way. This was according to the the, uh, the anonymous coach quote in there. I, I think there's a lot of validity to this. This, this is a this is a sentence that you could probably spend a couple of days talking about, but uh, there was something that you could never put your finger on it, but something just wasn't right in T Town. Yeah, no, I think. Well, you know, you, you did have a lot of you did have a lot of a lot of change, and I, you know, I who's who's to say? You know, Clemson that played that beat Alabama, and they beat them soundly, and you, we can talk about it all night long. But we hadn't seen anything like that as far as I mean, Nick Saban and Alabama have been incredible in the big games, and even the you know. The games they've lost have been close. And again, I would say Tua having a miserable game had, had something to do with that, and get, being down the goal line a couple of times and coming away empty. You know, there's a lot of things you can point out, but yeah, something did seem out of kilter, and I think that's what he's referring to. And uh, just a lot of changes, you know, at, at one time, and uh, you know, Clemson have been pouring toward Alabama from uh, multiple stores. They've been pouring toward the Alabama game for a year, and it looked like it, and Alabama looked a little. A little bit out of kilter, and uh, whether it's quarterback, coaching, whatever you want to say. Lindy Davis, right now, Lindy Publication, that's on your favorite newsstand, supermarkets, uh, all the different uh, stores. You can also go to lindysports.com. Let's go to the other side of the division, other side of the league in the East Division. How close is Georgia and Florida, in your opinion? Uh, not very. I think Georgia is substantially better than Florida, in my opinion. Uh, but Georgia's got Georgia's got more five star players than Alabama. You know? Uh, I mean, Georgia has had three last three years in the recruiting. They finished one, uh, excuse me, I mean two, two, one, and two. So they have a lot more athletes than Florida. Uh, Florida actually lost a good bit. Georgia lost a good bit. Uh, so we'll see. But no, I think from a talent level, they're not. They're still. There's still a big gap there, and it, it showed on the field last year. Georgia destroyed Florida, and so uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, Lee Blake Franks had a big year, and uh, Dan Bullock can coach him up. I, I certainly agree with that. And uh, But from a talent level, there's still a pretty big gap. Uh, Dan Bullock needs a couple more recruiting years. And, again, they may – if you win the head-to-head game, you can win the division. It's, it's that – you know, it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So, uh, they got a shot, but uh, I, I still think Georgia's pretty heavy favorite. Lindy, I want to go outside of the SEC and the ACC for just a couple of minutes. Everybody else wants a seat at the table. When you look at the Big 12, is it Texas, Oklahoma? And if I was asking you to pick the champ out there, who do you like? Oh, we like Oklahoma. I mean, Jalen Hurts going out there is a big deal. I mean, no doubt about it. You know, they Oklahoma is just uh, – we like – it's a two-man race. Texas is coming along. You know, it could go either way, but we like – you know, Oklahoma's got a winning culture. They they won four straight, I believe, Big Ten title, Big Big Twelve titles. Very much out of winning culture. Texas was up and down. Of course, they looked great against Georgia. We know that, but still, they were up and down. So it could go either way. But and if, if it doesn't hurt, when went to Oklahoma, I think we'd be, we'd be calling Texas. But we picked Oklahoma. I got to stick with our picks. They've got tremendous wideouts. They're going to score a lot of points again. They've got great running backs. Uh, they've got a new coordinator who came from uh, from o- Oregon State. Uh, excuse me, Washington State. You know, Washington State actually played some good, has played some good defense uh, uh, the last couple of years under the Pirate, and uh, so we think their defense will be substantially better. Can't be worse. So uh, they did lose four four uh, offensive linemen to the NFL, so that's going to be a challenge. But Texas, uh, you know, Texas it wouldn't wouldn't surprise us if Texas beat Oklahoma. Yeah, they should be a, a great ball game. Uh, they're surely going in the right. Herman surely has them going in the right direction. So we'll we'll see it, but definitely we think it's a two 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 team race. Can Michigan close the gap on Ohio State? <laughs> We're picking them, so I hope so. Uh, you know, you, you got to think they're going to do it at some point. And Ohio State with Urban Meyer retiring, uh, I think this is their year. They get them in Ann Arbor, uh, so I think they do have a good shot this year. Michigan lost five good players on defense over the NFL, so they've got a little re- retooling to do. Uh, but we think they're going to finally open it up this year. Michigan's played terrific defense under Harbaugh. Their offense has been terrible. We think they're going to open it up. Of course, former Alabama coach uh, Gaddis is the offensive coordinator up there, and we, we they think they're going to open it up this year, and this is going to be their breakthrough year. You would think it makes sense. Ohio State, 
Uh, of course, Lost Haskins. We'll see if Fields is ready to, 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 to do the deal up there as a transfer quarterback. But their defense was horrible last year. It was the worst. Ohio State had the best offense in their history and the worst defense in the same year. So uh, they've got question marks, got a new coach. You would think this would be the year, and uh, you would just – I, I kind of feel it is. You think the mission's got to beat them at some point. But they got to do it on the field, but they get them in and over. So uh, we're predicting this is the year. Lindy, final question. Uh, what do you think of the Auburn Tigers in 2019? Uh, Auburn's got a lot of good pieces. They really do. Uh, uh, Seth Williams, we think, is going to be a superstar. Of course, they got him right from Alabama's backyard. Oh, I know it. It hurts. It hurts. We think he's going to be a super, another Julio Jones. Matt works in my office. Uh, he interviewed him. He said he couldn't believe that big he was. He looked like he's a beast. And they've got other receivers. Uh, they're running backs. Of course, this first year, Auburn didn't have a 1,000-yard back in 10 years. Uh, Whitlow's healthy. they got some other guys. Got five seniors on the offensive line. Wasn't very good last year. Uh, we've got them with the best defensive line in the country. Brown came back. Uh, Davidson came back. So Auburn had a great year. When those two guys came back, Auburn's got a lot of good pieces. They really do. Got the hardest schedule in college football, one of the hardest in the history of college football. And that sounds like a mouthful, but they've got six teams in our top 13. How about them apples? Oh, so wow. Wow. Sure. All, and then if they get through that, they'd have a seventh in the SEC championship game if they were to get there. All right, Lindy. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lindy. I, I interrupted you. My no, call. just uh, they got some good pieces, but a brutal schedule. That's all. You know, it's it's, it, it's brutal. I don't I think I've ever seen anybody. I've seen it wasn't this hard before the season started. All right, listen. Uh, promote the publication. How folks can go to your newsstand, your website. Uh, you know, sure. I thought I thought the great thing when I was last time in your office, there was a brilliant idea being passed around that you do, and it's not something that you talk about. But there's a lot of people that have clients out there. And uh, what a may, way to make an impression. You guys send oh, these, yeah. these publications. But talk more on how invite people, how they can connect. Uh, oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, they can call our office. Just ask for me, 205-871-1182. We have many corporations that we personalize magazines for, and they give them to their customers. Been doing it since I started. Triple A Cooper, a big truck line. You, you, you know, they were my first customer uh, 37 years ago, and they're still a big customer to this day. So it works pretty well. And, um, People want to order the magazine individually, go to our website, lindysports.com, or call our office, or go to newsstand. It's pretty much on sale everywhere. All right. When you talk to Kirby, tell him not to be talking bad again about us. Anymore. <laughs> Ryan, thanks for having me yeah. on. Guys. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm, I, I mean, you, you know the way that media is now that, you know, that quote will be everywhere, you know, time we wake up tomorrow morning. So We hope so. Thanks, Lindy. I appreciate it, man. Great publication. Thank you. Bye-bye.